So I would like to present to you Carl Wiede Quist, and uh, he will uh, he will talk about the debate over the de definition of uh, basic income. So Carl, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, the floor is is yours. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's uh, it's great to see you all. This is uh, this is a uh, brand new idea. I didn't think I'd be writing on the ba uh, on the definition of basic income, but uh, but with this discussion that's been going on about it, I I figure I had to. So take a stock of where we are. The current uh, the current BN definition, uh, the basic income Earth Network's official definition of basic income or universal basic income, is a periodic cash payment unconditionally delivered to all on an individual basis without means test or work requirement. Now, BN has something in the neighborhood of 30 national affiliates, national and regional affiliates around the world, and their definitions often differ. Um, and there are many other basic income organizations that also define basic income, and some of them differ as well. Um, and there is there is some debate about what should and should not be in the definition. Uh, however, there are a lot of settled issues. We have a pretty good idea of what this is. Uh, one settled issue, I think, is is uh, a permanent is is this idea that is a permanent it is a regular permanent income. So something you get uh, weekly, monthly, maybe yearly, but it's going to be uh, even yearly is a bit pushing it. Um, that and it is going. It's expected you'll get it for a large number of years. A one a one time balloon payment, such as what Thomas Paine proposed in Agrarian Justice, is not a basic income. That's now being called a stakeholder grant. Um, it is universal in the sense that. Uh, no specific group is singled out. It's not specifically for the disabled or for the unemployed or for the elderly or for children or for artists. Those things are targeted incomes, targeted programs. That's, uh, that's not what we mean by basic income. It is also unconditional in the sense, it's widely agree that it's unconditional in this sense, that there is no behavioral requirement. You don't have to go to work. You don't have to attend classes. You don't have to uh, say you're willing to work if you find it. Um, it's it's given without asking you to do anything specific in exchange. Um, and that it is in cash. Uh, goods and services that are given unconditionally on a permanent, universal, unconditional basis, if they're goods and services instead of cash, that's not a basic income. It might have some similarities with basic income, but it's not basic income. Now, people who write a lot about basic income or connected to the basic income movement, I think understand all of this. Um, and this is pretty well settled within the movement. However, uh, the wider world out there doesn't necessarily understand this. So you will hear about a basic income in kind or a basic income for artists or basic income for entrepreneurs or something like that. Uh, even though we don't use those basic income, uh, those those things are out there, but within within the movement of people for basic income, this much is settled. However, uh, there is an internal debate, and in the internal debate, um, I find that there are two major issues that are being debated. Two questions that that uh, we don't have agreement on within the community that this should be or should not be part of the definition of basic income. And these questions are, should the definition be restricted to a uniform payment to all, that is, a non-means-tested grant delivered uh, in, uh, to high- and low-income people alike? Uh, there are grants that are given in the full form only to person who makes no income, and those fade out as your income goes up, uh, that a means-tested grant, which used to be called a negative income tax, can that be considered a form of basic income? Because uh, it does share a great deal of characteristics with uh, a uniform payment to all, regardless of income. The other one is, should the definition be restricted to a grant that is large enough to live on? Uh, the, uh, 
I think it's the goal of almost everyone in the movement to get a grant that's that large. Um, and how, however, even though even though there's a wide agreement that we want agreement that large, we want a grant that is that large. Does that have to be corporate incorporated into the definition of basic income, or can we say, well, this is basic income, and this is a good basic income is also large enough to live on? Um, now, Bien Bien's definition takes a stand on one of these two questions um, by saying it is it is uh, uh, by the definition being being a periodic cash payment unconditionally delivered all on an individual day that. Uh, on an individual basis without means test or work requirement, uh, that saying without means test is to say that is to take a is to say that the version that that declines with your income is not a basic income. Now, base BN also tacitly takes a stand on the other one by leaving it out. The other question: uh, Should the definition be be restricted to a grant that's large enough to live on? Well, there's nothing in the definition that says it has to be large enough to live on. So tacitly there, um, this definition is saying, well, it is basic income whether or not it's large enough to live on. That is what, what the BN definition is. Many of our affiliates define it differently on these two issues. Um, and many other basic income groups that aren't affiliated define it differently. Um, but And so despite the fact that Yen has taken a stand on these two issues, saying yes to one and uh, not necessarily for the other one. This is a controversial idea. So, but, and the controversy then involves two questions, but it's actually far more complicated. When you look at the interaction of these two questions, it is far more complicated because these two questions yield four candidates for being the definition of basic income. When you look at these candidates, when you look at these questions together, it actually yields four different candidates of what might be the definition of basic income. And looking at those, looking at these different combinations, I find there are actually nine concepts that are related, that come up in this debate. Um, and so we have, we have two questions which yield four candidates for being the definition of basic income, and we have nine concepts that need to be discussed. Uh, so let me uh, let me help you understand what I'm trying to say by a, by a, by using a two by two matrix. So here's the two by two matrix. This is table number one. Uh, I'm plotting the interaction of these two questions in the debate over basic income. So the first question along the top, is it a uniform payment, meaning non-means tested? Uh, and you have on the left side, yes, uniform payment. Uh, no, not uniform payment. That is means or income test. Then on the, on the left side, you have a question, is it large enough to live on? Uh, and along the top, you have, yes, it is large enough to live on. Along the bottom, you have, no, not large enough to live on. Then that gives you a two by two matrix in the center there uh, with answers to these questions. So cell number one is a yes answer to both questions. Yes, it is a uniform payment, and yes, it is large enough to live on. Cell number two gives you a no yes combination. Um, it is a means tested payment, not uniform, but it is large enough to live on. Cell number three is a yes no. It, yes, it is a uniform payment, but no, it's not large enough to live on. It's too small to live on. And then uh, cell number four is no to both questions. It is both means tested and too small to live on. So no, it's not uh, uniform and no, it is not large enough to live on. This matrix is showing the various concepts that come up in the, that come up in this. And well, you look at the matrix and you think, well, there's, there's four things here. Well, no, there's not four things here. There's actually nine things here. Uh, when you think about how using this matrix, we might look at the proposed definitions of basic income, we actually get four different possible definitions of basic income. One I would call the, the expansive definition of basic income. The expansive definition is to say, we don't require a yes or no answer 
to either of these questions. So the whole two by two matrix is cells one, two, three, and four combined. That is uh, the broad or expansive definition of basic income. That's one idea on the table. That's the way some BN affiliates would like to define it, and some other basic income groups would define it this way. Now, um, another way to use this matrix to come up with the is to say that uniformity is the definitive characteristic. And this is the current BN definition. Currently, BN's definition is that, yes, it has to be uniform, but no, it doesn't have to be large enough to live on. So that is cells one and three on the left side, that's the part that's shaded yellow, but it rules out the parts that's shaded green. A, uni uh, a non-uniform or means-tested grant is in green there. Now, this is where you get multiple concepts. If we are to use this yellow shaded area as the definition of basic income, what do we call the green shaded area? Uh, we, need a, we need a term for that. If, if the left is basic income, the right is something similar to basic income and not like basic income, what are we going to call that? It has in the past been called negative income tax, but nobody really wants to use that term anymore. Um, so that one is less popular. Now, uh, there are a number of people who want to make not uniformity, but, uh, but livability. The, the definitive characteristic. If livability is the definitive characteristic, which has been proposed, then basic income gets a definition, and instead of cells one and three, it gets a definition of cells one and two. And that's across the top. Um, yes, it's large enough to live on, um, and w whether it is uniform or not uniform uh, was, doesn't matter for this definition. But if that's the definition of basic income, what do you call the green shaded area? What do you call one that is not large enough to live on? Um, so that's, we're getting these concepts, as you're counting these concepts, they're coming up. But then um, that might not satisfy either, because there's some people who want an even more restrictive definition where it is both uniform and large enough to live on. And that gets me to table number five, where Basic income is defined as cell one, uh, only one cell. So it, in order to qualify as basic income, it has to be both a uniform payment and a payment that is large enough to live on. Well, if you're going to call basic, in, if, if that's going to be called basic income, we still need a word for cell two, something that's just like a basic income in every way, except for it's means tested. It varies with income. Uh, or cell number three, it's just like a basic income in every way, except that it's not large enough to live on. Or cell four, it is both mean test and large enough to live on. So we need names for each of these cells. Um, so if you count all of these concepts, uh, here's one, here's two more, uh, here's two more, that gets us to five, and here's four more. I promised you nine concepts, that's nine concepts. Count them up, that's nine concepts. Now, there is hope for some simplification, though. Um, if we have a branch term and four qualifiers, we can identify all nine of these concepts. Now, I also want to consider where to go from here, um, because I think a lot of what we're doing in the definition is the wrong way to go about it. Um, we have a political controversy. And a lot of us are trying to solve this political controversy by definitional fiat. And that's not going to happen. There are some people that support a means-tested grant. And there are some people that support at least starting with a grant that's too small to live on. Um, defining basic income in a restricted manner is not going to stop these, make all these people drop their support for a means-tested grant or a small grant and become part of the movement for a uniform grant that's large enough to live on. They're going to continue to be for what they're for. Um, most of them, anyway, are going to continue to be for what they're for, and they might even continue using the word basic income for it, just because we tell them they can't doesn't mean that they're going to stop doing it. Um, so what we need is, what we, what we need is, um, try to find words that allow for a respectful discussion of all of the relevant concepts that tend to come up in the debate. And, uh, and as near as I can tell, those relevant concepts are, there are nine different concepts. So 
Uh, I also need to make a little little digression here in discussing the question of how language works. Um, it is as much as the French cat French Academy would like to say that it tells you what the right definition of French words are. Uh, that's not how languages work. Um, languages work by usage. Words take on meanings by how people use them and by what they recognize as, as what this word has been used for and what they understand. Um, so adopting Bien or some other uh, group Adopting their official definition in no way makes that the right term. Uh, language is anarchy. There is not necessarily a, there, there is no right term. There's just a more widely understood term and a less widely understood term and less widely understood term. And some of them are wide enough to get into the dictionary and some of them are not. Uh, so uh, we are not in the position to choose what the right term is. Uh, we can choose an official, the end at least, or, or the, any of the national affiliates can choose. They can choose what's going to be their official definition, but to get that definition accepted widely is another issue. All we're really trying to do is influence acceptability. When you come up with an official definition, you're trying to influence what people are gonna find acceptable, but whether you succeed or not, we don't know. Um, so all this is merely an effort to to try to find accepted it and likely um, try to try to find something that's going to be common enough to be standard. And this is tough for basic income because as much as the basic income movement has grown, it is still on the fringe of mainstream politics in most countries. And it is not a well understood and well used term. By the, by the billions of people that live in the world. Um, and so, so when a lot of people in the world are not recognizing the term at all, its definition can very easily be changed. So one person who happens to be very influential can say, oh, this is basic income, and people start using it their way, and, and basic income is defined something that's very different. So we're dealing with something where we might not have the power to influence the discussion enough to say, this is the definition of basic income. Um, so, what? So, one thing knowing that acceptable and recognized terms are what's uh, are, are are what really ends up getting into the language. Uh, I uh, then um, um, knowing that knowing that I want to look at well, what are some of the terms that have been used recently? Um, and what are some of the, use that, the terms that have been used for these things? Well, so for the expansive term, um, is the expansive term has sometimes been called guaranteed income or income guarantee or basic income guarantee or guaranteed basic income or minimum income. All of these words have been applied to the whole two by two matrix. And sometimes the word basic income also has been applied to this whole two by two matrix as much as a lot of people I know in the end object to using using basic income or unconditional basic income for this whole matrix. It has been used that way um, very often in Canada and I think in German as well. Uh, very often basic income applies to the whole matrix. Uh, now, looking at Bien's definition, uh, Bien's definition where it has to be uniform, it doesn't have to be large enough to live on, uh, common terms of that include basic income, citizen's income, and that very ugly and rather archaic term that was used in the 1960s and 70s, demogrant. I don't think demogrant is coming back. I don't think anybody wants to call their organization the Democrat or the Demograt Earth Network or something like that. Now, for non-uniform, uh, non-uniform means-tested income, some of the more common terms are negative income tax and uh, guaranteed income. Now, guaranteed income has a problem because it's also used as the expansive term. So using it to identify something as specifically not basic income or not this whole matrix can cause a bit of confusion. Negative income tax is uh, a very, uh, very well-recognized term for the entire matrix. Um, 
uh, sorry, for the green part, uh, cells three and and four, sorry, sorry, cells two and four in this matrix, it's well recognized that the problem is a lot of people today who support what we used to call negative income tax don't want to use that term because it's associated with Milton Friedman in the 1970s and with some very low level, ungenerous versions of uh, of a guaranteed income, so people don't want to be associated with. Um, so we're looking for a new term like guaranteed income. Now, existing terms for the uh, large enough to live on version include guaranteed adequate income, guaranteed livable income, sometimes basic income is used for that. Um, one that's not large enough to live on is sometimes called a partial guaranteed income. However, partial um, has some baggage as well, because partial has sometimes been used, full and partial have been used um, in, have been used to mean uh, full being used large enough that it could place, replace the rest of the welfare system. And partial is one that's not large enough to replace the rest of the welfare system. Well, not everybody in the movement wants to replace the rest of the welfare system, and they don't want to be connected to those words. Now, looking at some common terms for the whole matrix, whole matrix um, we have uh, for cell number one, we've got a lot of terms um, that have been used. Sometimes basic income is used just in the restrictive sense. Sometimes a full, a livable, or sufficient basic income is used for, for the restricted definition, or a full, livable, or sufficient citizen's income, uh, a full, livable, or sufficient dem demigrants. Uh, for not uniform, but large enough to live on. I've seen guaranteed adequate income, uh, full or livable guaranteed income, uh, full or livable negative income tax. Uh, for something that is uniform, but not large enough to live on, I've seen partial basic income or less than livable basic income. And for something that is neither uniform nor large enough to live on, um, I've seen partial or less than livable guaranteed income, partial or less than livable negative income tax, those can come up. Uh, so we've got to consider where to go from. We've got to submit, remember the limits of our power um, that, uh, that, that saying, well, we're going to call, we're going to define basic income like this is only going to tell us so much about how people are actually going to use these terms. Uh, but what, but I want to remember what the goal is. The goal is to find a respectful way to discuss these nine concepts. These nine concepts are not going to stop coming up in the debate. How do we talk about it? I'm not proposing the definition of basic income. I'm not proposing how to fill in these nine concepts that the matrix identifies. Um, I'm just trying to alert us that this is the way we need to be looking at the question. That's really the sole goal of this presentation. And the, the upcoming papers. This is how we have to look at the question: uh, how we're end up going to fill in this matrix. That I don't know. Here are some ideas for. Um, now, there's one thing that we could do is if we could if we use this expansive definition of basic income. If we use this definition of basic income, where basic income refers to the whole matrix. If we use that definition of basic income. Um, there's one problem. Is it is, is is well? There's a couple of problems, but let me show you what we could do. We're going to call that basic income. Uh, we could then use this. So we use the expansive definition for basic income, and then use modifier of universal basic income to mean the uniform payment to everyone, regardless of size. Then. Um, livable or sufficient or full as our modifier, that gets us an easy way to fill in this, this matrix. So basic income is the whole matrix, all four cells put together. Um, and then a universal income could be a full universal basic income, a livable universal basic income, or a sufficient basic income could be our terms for the upper matrix. The lower left matrix could be a partial universal basic income, a uh, less than livable UBI, a non-livable UBI. And then um, if we're use, using guaranteed in guaranteed basic income as our term for 
uh, a basic income is means tested, then we can have a full guaranteed income, a, le a li full livable or sufficient guaranteed basic income, a full means tested basic income, a, uh, a full uh, income tested basic income, and so on. We got all these terms that we could use. The problem with this, the problem with this is that if we were to do it this way, then Basic income and universal basic income are no, no longer synonyms. Universal basic income and basic income has been, have been used as synonyms for decades, for, for at least 30 years, maybe more like 50 years. Basic income and universal basic income have been synonyms. However we define one, we usually want to define the other. This idea is say, well, we're going to define basic income as being slightly different universal basic income and um and and not a lot of want of people not a lot of people want to do it that way so i'm not sure that works so another way we could do it is to have no single term to have no single term for this expansive definition to have no one term of that to call that to call the expansive definition basic or guaranteed income. We use that expansive, that expansive thing is called basic or guaranteed income. If we do it that way, then we can fill in the matrix like this. So on the left column is basic or universal basic income. That's our modifier on the left. And on the right is guaranteed income. So guaranteed income refers only to the means tested version of the grant. Then we can have full, livable, or sufficient, being one, choose one of those as our modifiers, and partial, less than livable, or non-livable for the modifier that denotes that it's not large enough. To live. So that would give us uh, an FBI would be uh, a full basic income, or an FUBI, full universal basic income. Um, a livable basic income, or a livable universal basic income, a sufficient basic income, or sufficient universal basic income, all of those are ways to identify that restricted definition in cell one. Guaranteed basic income, uh, or guaranteed, sorry, there is no guaranteed basic income in this matrix. Uh, you get a, a full guaranteed income is, is uh, a means tested grant that's large enough to live on, that's cell two. A full guaranteed income or a livable guaranteed income or a sufficient guaranteed income. All of those could identify that cell number two which is popular, that's a popular idea in Canada and I believe Germany as well. Then cell number three, which is small enough, too small to live on, but it is a uniform payment like the Alaska dividend, uh, that would be a partial basic income or a partial unconditional basic income, a less than livable basic income, or a non-livable basic income or non-livable universal basic income. And then finally in cell four, where it's both means tests that are not large enough to live on. You call that a partial guaranteed income or a less than livable guaranteed income, a non livable guaranteed income. These are the kind of things we need to do. Um, this is, I think, how we should be looking at it. We should be looking at it not as what is the one correct definition of basic income. We're never gonna, we're never gonna, by definitional fiat, get everybody to say this is the one thing that we're all fighting for. Um, there are a lot of people who feel strongly that it has to be a uniform payment to other to everybody. There are other people that say it doesn't. There are other people that say we really need to say it's not basic income unless in unless livable. But there are other people that say, oh, I'm, I'm willing to start with something that's not livable. Um, we've got all these ideas on the table. What we need to do is find language that we can talk about all these ideas. That's the point of my discussion. All right. So I'd like to discuss all of that with all of you. Carl, thank you very much uh, for your for your presentation and for sharing your thoughts uh, about the definition of uh, basic income. Um, uh, we have in the chat already two um, comments, so therefore I would like to follow the comments uh, of of the chat. So when the first one uh, was a comment by Professor Neumerker. Um, so, Professor Neumann, could you 
please just uh, share your your ideas or or your comments um that we can start a discussion okay thank you very much <laughs> Uh, I, I make it short. Uh, uh, you see that it not always does make sense to put a question into the chat too early when the question is solved during the presentation. My argument was only, uh, isn't uh, the definition of partial basic income enough when you cannot live on, uh, um, uh, on uh, the basic income? Yeah. But I think with the last slide, Carl uh, solved that problem. So therefore, if Carl uh, has no comment on it and said, uh, I have solved it, then it's okay. Okay, so yeah, we can move on from that one. Okay, then we have uh, a question by Eric. Um, Eric? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my question is, are these definitions along the livability lines, actually the operation side of the basic income? Uh, so this difference, uh, because currently we are still at the exploratory stage of the UBI and how would these programs can be carried out in, uh, in, uh, in, in countries. In, in, uh, we're still at the piloting stage. So that's why I, I, I would kind of attribute such kind of differences in the definitions. Actually, because of the um, our explore, exploration of the, uh, the, um, the uh, operational side of the, uh, the basic income. So I, 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 I don't know, I, I, I kind of um, foresee that as we uh, more understand or as more kind of uh, universal basic income um, programs rolling out in many countries, as we understand more of its impact, social impacts, and the, the, def the definition may converge into a kind of consensus where that, um, where these diff differences will disappear. Well, I, I don't think I share your optimism. Um, the, I, um, well, the, the, the difference between partial and full, there are, there are, there are two political things going on there. One is people like, people like me, who of, of course I want uh, as large a basic income as, as, as we can get, that's going to be sustainable. Um, but I'll start anywhere. I, I, I do think, a, a, I do think a, a penny a month basic income is better than a zero basic income. Um, and as a step towards moving up there, I'll, I'll take what I can get because the problem in this world, one of the biggest problems in the world today is that, uh, that disadvantaged people don't have enough money. Anything that gets more hands in, more money into the hands of the people who need it most is a step in the right direction. Things like the Alaska dividend or, uh, the give directly program in Kenya, um, are not livable. But they are big steps in the right direction. We want to think of this as this is a form of basic income. Uh, you can call it partial. Uh, you can call it non-livable or something. There's a, so there's those of us who think of those as something on the way. However, there is another group of people who who support a uniform payment to everybody, but want to keep it really low. This tends to be from your more libertarian circles. And uh, sometimes we don't want to hang out with them. And the people who want to say, that's not basic income. What they're trying to do is trying to disassociate us with those people, that those are not our allies. And some of those people are not. Some of those people want to get rid of the entire existing welfare state and then give you a very, very low, very low non-livable basic income. That's not going to give you money. And that's, one of the, that's I think, is the problem that they're trying to solve by defining it as it's got to be. Um, so there's that issue. Then the... Um, the issue of whether it is means tested, and by means tested, I mean income tested, means tested or uniform to everyone. Um, there are a lot of us who believe that a uniform payment simply works better. Um, and that, that uh, and there are other people who think that a non-uniform means tested work, work where they, they're under this delusion that it's cheaper. It's not any cheaper. Um, and uh, they, but they think, well, even if they're not under the delusion that's cheaper, they think, well, everybody else thinks it's cheaper. Um, so, so rather than explaining to them the complex math that shows you the uniform payment is no cheaper than a means tested, is no more expensive than a means tested payment, I'm just going to give them a means tested payment. Um, 
And so, and this is a pretty big political difference. In some countries, they've tried to use basic income to mean a means-tested basic income, which leaves people who are far a uniform, universal basic income, no word to talk about. It. So there's a big political thing here. I don't think it's just operating. Thank you. So are there some more questions or comments? People with their electronic hands up. If you see those little yellow things on people's faces, um, uh, 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 in the corner, of uh, I have to fingers. switch between <laughs> between the chat. So there is okay. Uh, there is any Miller. Any? Yep. Thank you. In fact, um, uh, Verena Lofner had her hand up before me. Um, but since you've called me, I, I will go ahead. But um, uh, Carl, this is a very interesting analysis, but there's a couple of problems here. First of all, um, Biang has not accepted that uh, that a basic income should be uniform. They've accepted it should be universal. In other words, it should go to everybody, but not that it should be the same amount. And then the other point is that the opposite of uniform is not means tested, but categorical or some other circumstances which are definitely not means tested. If something is means tested, then it's definitely not a basic income. That's one of the things in the in the definition. So I'd be very interested to see you to do the same analysis, but using uniform and categorical or other differences in circumstances, but not means tested and see what the outcome looks like. Thanks. Well, um, I, I believe that uniform, although the word uniform does not appear in the in, in the end's definition, I believe it is implied by uh, or, or uh, implied or better by other things in the definition, other things in the definition. Um, the fact that an unconditional grant given to our regards, regardless of this, that and the other thing, uh, all of which implies to me implies to me that it is uniform. It's, it's clearly, I mean, it says no means test. Um, now, um, and uh, so I am I am merely here using uniform to mean non means test. I'm using a very uh, I'm using it in a very specific sense. Uh, it can vary with income or it cannot vary with income. It doesn't vary with income. I'm calling it uniform in that sense. Uh, and I believe I believe the BN definition uh, implies that. When it says non means tested and for everyone, that it, it implies that it is also uniform. Um, now, the, the thing is, there are people who want a means tested grant. Um, and we have to be able to talk to these people. And we have to, and they got to be able to talk to us. Uh, and we have to find a word that's going to be for what we're for that also lets them to talk about what they're for so that we can all respectfully discuss each other. Okay. This is this is cell number two we're talking about here. This is cell number one. What's the difference? What's the what's similar? What's the difference about them? Who supports this? Who supports that? Who supports whichever one of those they can get? We need words for for us all to be able to talk to each other. That's that's what this presentation is about. Um, not about what those words should be or which one is the right one to use basic income. So which which of these cells or combination cells is the right place to put the word basic income? That's less important. We'll have to agree, disagree on that, Carl. We can have long discussions about that in the future. <laughs> okay, we have two more hands up. Uh, Verena, would you just go next, please? Verena? Can you hear me? She looks like she's frozen. Uh, yeah, obviously she's frozen. So then maybe Alina. Okay. Alina, can no. you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. I can go ahead if Verena is frozen now. And it uh, was no the question uh, by me, maybe a little commentary from the philosophical philosophical view. Carl is uh, a really on time discussion. I mean, to, I mean um, about this definition because uh, indeed I see very different names of basic income, universal basic income, guaranteed income, 
And uh, you're right, uh, we have a Vienna de definition and uh, many other definitions on the one hand and on the other hand, uh, we have in some countries different pilots and uh, they call to anybody. I think that is a wrong way to um, take or, the, or to orientate ourselves on the uh, political uh, decisions. We are academicals, we uh, have to, uh, yeah, to do this, to, to choose one definition. And I was confused be, uh, because you, uh, yeah, at the beginning you call it, you called it uh, basic income and not universal basic income. I think it is this may be a, a clue between, because in my opinion, um, you have two uh, different uh, crucial parts, is livability and uniformity. And for livability, I would say basic income uh, means not livability is basic at base. It's maybe a minimum, it must not be enough to live on. And so maybe the part universal basic income can, can can maybe make it better. I don't know. But uniformity is its main test. I think that is not um, a definition of basic income because it's the same as the red in terms like uh, um, social transfer transfers uh, that we have already. You know, that is, uh, I'm against this uh, claim to, to, to make the equality between basic income and uh, social transfers we have. We had this debate last year in Germany uh, about Bürgergeld, maybe you uh, know it, and that is just a no new label for social transfers. It is not a, a sense of basic income, in my opinion. So I would say uh, the in your table, the cell one, that is the universal basic income, and uh, all, all other spots are just a partial basic income, maybe. I don't know, it's so important to differentiate resorts, uh, different cases, with different sales, is it so really important to do it? Or maybe just to differentiate between, between the universal basic income, UBI, and other kinds of it. Just like input. Um, that, if you're going to say, if you're going to differentiate between universal basic income and then something that would be a non-universal basic income, um, you're going to create a, a, a lot of confusion with the literature that's out there. Um, because universal basic income, unconditional basic income, and basic income have all been used as synonyms for the last half century or so. At least since 1986, when BN was founded. It's not UBN, it's BN. Basic mm -hmm. Income Earth Network, um, but defined as being an unconditional payment. Um, and if you look at Two of two of the most uh, two of the most well known writers in basic uh, in the basic income community use different words. Uh, uh, um, Guy Standing always uses only basic income, not universal, not unconditional basic income. Um, in Philippe's book, in Philippe's book, um, Real Freedom for All, he uses UBI, unconditional basic income. Um, and I don't know in his later it was his book with uh, his book book with Yannick Vanderboards, I don't know if they continue to use that term, if they use universal basic income. I've used uh, basic income, yeah. Um, I uh, I've used all of these I've used all three of those terms at various times, just trying to use whatever seems to be most popular at the time that I'm right. Um, so trying to then Take terms, ter take terms that have been used as synonyms and say they're no longer going to be used as synonyms um, will create this confusion with all this pre-existing body of literature. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Now, now on your other part of your question, you say, well, a, a, a means-tested grant, you don't think that should be called basic income. Well, okay, what, then what do we call it? There are people who support that idea. That idea is on the table. It's well under discussion in Germany and in Canada and in the United States. There are a lot of people who are supporting this term. Whether we call it a form of basic income or we call it something else, we need a word for it. 
And if you want to have a good, respectful, clear discussion, it's great to have the uh, people on different sides being able to use the same terms. If basic income means a, a payment that's the same regardless of income, what I'm calling uniform, okay, what do you call one that's not the same regardless of income? We need these terms. We need these. We need nine terms. We simply. I agree. Simply, I agree with you. I, I, used to use, I used to use I used to use universal basic income. I, I thought it was exactly by if you say uh, guest standing to use basic income, this is wider. You know, basic income can be uh, many things. And uh, I want to say, as I said, mm, two different discussions. You know, basic income or unconditional basic income or universal basic is one claim. So it's a different, a different rhetorical claim. Yeah, terminological and all. Uh, other parts like uh, negative tax or the guaranteed tax. This is uh, this is two discussion. The first one, what about, and the uh, the second one, how. You know, if we said uh, negative tax income, this is how it made. But this is not what about discussion. I think you uh, will start the discussion. What about? What about? What is it? What is, like a phenomenon? Yeah, what is it? What what of kind the income that is? So and uh, so I mean it's uh, important to separate um, from this uniformity because uniformity is not what about is is it about how it made how we how we decide who receives this income that is main tested. Well, we still need words for it. Some people think this is how we should do it. Some people think that is how we should do it. What are the words for this and that? We need words for both this and that. And for the broad goal that the two things share. Okay. Um, my input is, uh, is our task to decide uh, how is it, uh, what is the definition, not from politicians, not from everywhere. And uh, my input is to concentrate what about the uh, discussion, not how to. So, thank you. Verena? Thank you. Um, yes, thank you for that very, very important uh, work that you're doing there. That um, I think I have two remarks, actually. Um, one is, um, are you sure that we do not have to expand your metrics um, by also talking about um, who is eligible for basic income? Because universality is something that you said is, um, everyone says universality is the same, is the same thing. So we have to pay it to everyone. But um, as I've read it, um, some uh, some scholars are talking about paying it only to citizens. Some scholars are talking about paying it only to residents. Um, I think um, Philip van Paris and Yannick van Abort, uh, they they argued that they only want to pay it to tax paying residents. So that, again, is another um, form of definition. Do we not have to expand your metrics in that sense? That's the first remark. Um, if you do, I, I think maybe you need, um, you, you, if you add just one more question, you get, uh, you get a three dimensional two by two by two matrix with eight cells, which you can no longer display on a two dimensional screen. Uh, so if you are going to discuss that issue, um, it, you are, if you're going to discuss that issue, then, um, I, I would suggest maybe maybe deciding which slice of this. Do you want to look at a uniform, non-means-tested payment, or do you want to look at a means-tested payment, uh, large enough to limit, and, and look at that issue separately? But I um I I consider that I don't consider that issue to be as fundamental as these two these two issues. Because um, there is some strive about getting to universality and what does that mean? Um, does that mean all legal residents? Does that mean all citizens? Uh, does that mean uh, does that mean something in between? Um, that's that's kind of a one time issue to be solved. I'm not sure we need different words for that. Um, that that we need a different word for a basic income for citizens only, or a bit a bit uh, uh, and a different word for basic income for citizens 
and legal permanent residents who are not citizens, not yet citizens. Um, I'm not sure we really need two different words for that, even even though there is a policy decision to be made. Okay, thank you. I think I do. I do agree. Maybe we do not need uh, different words for it, but I still want to stress the relevance of this um, assumption um, that most scholars actually do not discuss in their in their work. Which maybe um, and I thought that maybe your work could add to this or, or stressing this um, very very fundamental point because it does have an effect on um, on how we how we uh, evaluate the the concept and how we evaluate the effects of the concept. Um, that's just like uh, yeah. yeah yeah. There's and there's uh, there's also a, a disingenuous uh, there's a disingenuous criticism that we get a lot. Well, oh, you say you're for a uni you you say you're for a universal basic income. Well, it's not really universal unless it's worldwide. Well, yeah, I would like to have a worldwide grant. I didn't create the nation state system, and I, I can't get rid of the nation state system. There's no I have no power to create the the international worldwide uniform large enough to live on grant that I that I would like to create. So I'm I'm going to have to start with in one country. So it's going to be universal in the in the confines of one country or one region or something like that. You know, um, and, and, and yeah, technically that's not universal, but that's as, as good as we can start with. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, just one more remark, if I, if we still have the time, um, I I think that. Um, I'm actually working on on something a bit similar or maybe building on what you're doing right now because um, I thought of uh, trying trying to develop uh, some kind of fidelity assessment for basic income experiments um, because it's it's there is this kind of fidelity assessment um, for example for the um, housing first policy that is introduced in some countries as pilots and um, they use it, to evaluate it, um, to evaluate the concept from both sides. So from the um, policy side, how you introduce, how you want to introduce this, what introduce it, what are the characteristics that we have to fulfill to call it actually a basic income experiment, and then on the other side, um, they also use it for um, people who are um, subject to the experiment, who are subject to to the payment, uh, or in, in that case, subject to housing first. Um, so that the respondents can um, can evaluate how how they perceive it. Is it really um, completely uh, unconditional for me, or do I feel like that there is a condition from the administrative side that I have to fulfill in some kind of way? So um, I thought that this could be very fruitful if we look at um, different basic income experiments um, to have a more unified uh, way to evaluate them. And maybe I thought um, if if you'd like, I'd, I'd, I'd be very happy to talk to you about that later on, and maybe we can collaborate on that even. That would be great. Yeah, yeah let's share, uh, let's share our, our, our work and, uh, and discuss it. Thank you. Marina, okay, thank you very much uh, for your question comments. Uh, it's good if something like uh, a collaboration can start within this, this framework, so it's uh, very, very good to hear. Uh, I see that Eno raised his hand. Yes, on these short remarks. Um, a guaranteed basic income is what we have already, at least in Germany. Um, <clears throat> but that is means tested and so on and, con and has conditions. But a guaranteed uh, basic income is already existing. And um, um, I miss the word unconditional. So you use it now as a discussion. That is in Germany the term, bedingungsloses Grundeinkommen. That's the important point. And unconditional is also um, the same like universal. So if it's unconditional, that means it's not for, for a specific part of society. Um, but what I want to say is um, definitions is one, but as we see, we can also uh, go lost in definitions. And um, I just want to mention another approach to look on it on what is the idea. And then it's obvious that what is interesting at, the, at this universal, unconditional, however, basic income is that it is with no conditions. So that inspires the people. All the other um, considerations are 
expanding social welfare systems um, established ideas of how to help the poor. And the new one, the difference is it is unconditional and it is for everybody. So from the point of um, the perception of what the idea is, it's a little bit different than all that what comes up if you make definitions. So then it's clear it's high enough to live from, to live on. It is unconditional. It is for everybody. And then, of course, there are some rules. Who is everybody? Uh, and so on. But I want to point out that there, there can be, by side of definitions, an angle to look on it. What is it? What, what the new is at this? What is really new and totally different from everything that is welfare or social security thinking, helping the poor and so on and so on. So to look at that idea, because if you are just choosing definitions, so I I, I got the feeling you, you can go, get, get lost in definitions. And the idea, what is in, what, what really the idea is and what inspires all the people with an unconditional basic income is that it is really unconditional and that it is for everybody that is shocking and that it is high enough to live from. Well, let me go back. Let me go back to the let me go back to the matrix. So um, I'm getting like um, a lot of a lot of uh, strong feeling in this Zoom room that um, that um, that uh, most of us don't want the expansive definition of base to basic basic income. Um, and most of us don't want to include anything that is means tested in basic income. So these two are out. Um, that th th these um, that um, that these are uh, um, that these are something at least they're out only in the sense that we don't want to call this basic income. Um, you don't want to call this basic income. You don't want to call this basic income. Some of us are acceptable with this, maybe a full version and a partial version. And uh, um, a lot of us want to restrict it even further to this. That's fine. If this is where you, if you want to say basic income or universal basic income or unconditional basic income or uniform basic income, whatever you want to call it, is only this cell. That's fine. I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm saying is even if that's what where we're going to put the name basic income, we still have a question, how do we name these other three cells? How do we name this thing? If that's not basic income, what do we call it? There are people who want to talk about this. Um, what, uh, there are people who want to talk about this. How do they talk about it? What language do we give them to talk about this? Um, and there are people that want to talk about this whole set. What word do we use for this whole set? Um, we, what, wherever we place the name basic income does not end the, the, the issue. The issue is much bigger than what you call what is denoted by this term basic income or unconditional universal basic income. What is denoted by basic income is one thing. What do we call these other nine concepts that people aren't going to stop talking about be, just because we say only this one is called basic income? Okay, Carl, thank you very much. I agree with you that it is very important to, um, to, to have clear definitions and to have clear concepts and be aware of what we are going to talk about when we, when we talk about uh, basic income. And that brings me to my, my comment. I'm not fully clear about your distinction that you made between basic income uh, and negative income tax with regard uh, to uh, uh, to the conditionality or being, uh, you said, okay, uh, UBI, uh, that's unconditional, NIT, ne negative income tax, that, that's conditional because you have to declare, you, you have to, to uh, file out uh, you know, you have to de declare your your income and probably your wealth if if there is a wealth tax. 
Um, but Tobin, he showed in his uh, in his article the equivalence between the UBI and the negative income tax. Uh, but if we are talking about you know an, an, an UBI, we have to keep in mind that the payments that they have to be taxed, and therefore a type of you know conditionality comes comes into in again into that concept so i see no distinction with regard to conditionality between an, an ubi and between a, a a negative income tax you, you you're saying you see the two as equivalent yeah yeah well uh, um uh that uh that's one of the controversial issues. They are, they can be equivalent if it is an income tax finance basic income. Every uh, every negative income tax has some version of, of basic income that is equivalent to it um, and on certain assumptions about our ability to collect everybody's taxes and give everybody the payment that they're due every week. Um, if these things don't work as well as they do in theory, then they don't end up being equivalent. And you can have a base, you cannot have a negative income tax without having an income tax. You can have a basic income that's tied with a sales tax or a land value tax or other taxes. You could have a, a system where there's no income tax and that basic income has no equivalent negative income tax. It might have negative income taxes that are similar, but not the same. Um, now those, and to, to say that, that you view them same, so so that that when you say you view them as very much the same, it sounds like you want the expansive definition. Well, we need people who want to talk about the expansive concept need a word to talk about the expansive concept. People who disagree, there are people who think the means tested version is better, um, and there are people who think that the uniform version is better, um, and. And there's disagreement about that, so we need words to talk about all of that. I'm not saying that the people who want the restrictive definition are right and you're wrong, and I'm not saying that you are right and they're wrong about where we should put the, ner the name basic income. What I'm saying is we need names for all these concepts because they all keep coming up. Right here in this discussion, we have different ideas about, about, about what concept we think is most important. Well, if different people have different ideas about what concept is most important, we need words for all those concepts. Yeah, so I I agree fully with you on 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 that. And we had today we we had a really lively discussion um, with a lot of contribution, and it showed uh, the the relevance of that topic and to to talk about that and to ex exchange. Uh, uh, about this ideas and, and concepts. So uh, there are m um, more news in the chat. Uh, so Alina, Alina? Yes, I mean, uh, just uh, Carl, you talked about uh, the distinguish between definition and names as different things. And um, the essence of basic income is, uh, yeah, it, it must be in the definition, not in the name. You can call it uh, whatever uh, for the basic income. And I think this is important to take basic income as a generical term for all of kinds. And so you can distinction between universal uh, lovability and uniformity and so on. And all other parts, all other kinds of a special uh, basic income. Because uh, I think you try to 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 give the names for all of sorts of basic income, uh, and uh, I think that is not a claim. That is a politi political decision, maybe that uh, that is a claim of uh, particular political politicals in different countries, but not an academical stuff to to give a name for all of kinds or all of sorts of basic income. So that's another concept of basic income. Uh, maybe it's it 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 good to to buy it 
that is a, a that is important issue to understand what is the essence, what is the concept of basic income. But uh, we we have to restrict and say, or we have to say, okay, that is a basic income. All other kinds, this is maybe a partial uh, sorts of basic income, but uh, it's not our stuff to give a names for all of sorts of it. Well, uh, we've, we've had some pretty different concepts of basic income here. I, I, from what I've understood and the, the people have talked in this discussion, we have people who think basic income is only cell one. And we have other people in this very discussion that thinks basic income should be thought of as cells one, two, three, and four, all put together. Those are really very different concepts. Um, and and things aren't going to be clear if if uh, we're just fighting over which one of the which one of these places where we could play these four places where we could put the definition of basic income. Uh, uh, if if People are keep using them in different ways. We need we we need language that 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 these people who disagree on these issues can talk about it and understand each other. Um, don't you think that is uh, uh, overwhelming to try to satisfy all the people? I mean, uh, we as a, we are academic, we have to choose order to set this definition or not to try ask all the people what uh, they mean uh, about basic income. We have to say that is basic income and so <laughs> they can use it and, and not um, because I I think you try well, to you try to you try to co collect all uh, understanding and all of case of users of basic income and to collect it together and to look what different people say and what different people mean and I think that it's impossible to, to find some definition that satisfies all the wishes of, of different people. We have to give this definition, the concept of. But, but it doesn't end when you decide this is what I call basic income. It doesn't end there. Um, you cannot end the discussion. You don't have that power. I don't have that power. The whole basic income network doesn't have that power. Um, and uh, and often people fighting about this is the only way to do it uh, often end up dividing a movement. Um, is that as much as you say, as much as one person might say, it's got to be this uniform payment that doesn't vary with income. Other people say, no, this payment that varies with income, this is better. They got to talk. They got to. They got to have words to talk. Um, I not agree with you because we have uh, all. Uh, we have already <laughs> the finish. It's just a payment. You know, it's not a discussion. Is it a payment or not? We said this is unconditional. That is, there is not a discussion about it. And all the criteria you said, there is no discussion about it. We have to say, okay, is this is a bright concept of basic income, and we have a different sorts of it, maybe universal, maybe partial, and we can look how we uh, can find it of uh, how, how different sorts. But what is ba basic income? It's, it's a decision. It's a decision. It's, it, it's just there, already there. It's nothing to you. Um, well, okay. Uh, uh, here's what Annie says in the chat. I agree with Alina. The definition is an academic matter. The naming of terms is a political matter. Um, there's a case for activists to root their advocacy in the academic foundation. I'm not sure I'm really understanding because um, uh, a definition and a naming of a term, uh, those are the same thing. When you name a term, you're defining it. Um, the um, And I, I don't believe that this is restricted to either an academic or an activist situation. There are people who are taking the term basic income and using it for a means test of grant. Um, and, uh, and, and when they do that, they're often shutting out discussion of, of a uniform grant for everyone. Um, and and uh, if they had a, a word that they could use and they could be happy with that would distinguish it from the word that we're, we've been for 40 years trying to put for a uniform grant, uh, they, uh, we, could, we could have a, we could, we could, uh, have a discussion among activists, academics, or whoever 
uh, about um, about the differences between these concepts. But if you're try trying to use a de definition to shut out um, to shut out discussion, as I think uh, was briefly seen to be going that way in Canada. Um, but ca Canadians, for a while, were trying to use basic income only to mean uh, an, uh, what we call a negative income tax. And they've since tr moved to the term guaranteed income. But it's only because we've had discussions like this, saying, well, if you do it that way, you're, you are trampling on what we've called basic income for 40 years. That's a big overlap between activists and academics. Uh, Annie, did you want to say something? Um, pardon? Yes, we have two more comments and then I would, you know, slowly close the, the session. Um, can you can hear me? Yeah. Um, so there was, uh, there is a lot of ongoing in, in the chat. So there was one comment from uh, Turu uh, Yamanori, and he referred to about. Um, uh, so there are a lot of comments that are coming <laughs> coming in. I have I have difficulties in finding. I have to scroll up and down. Okay, uh, so he uh, referred to an article about uh, the um, histography of the term uh, basic basic income. And uh, there was a comment uh, from, from Theodore that it would be interesting to, to study the use of the term basic income with the meta uh, anal uh, analysis. So this might be, I think that might be quite, quite interesting. And what else do we have here uh, in in the chat. So uh, there are two more comments by Alina. So today we had a very, very lively discussion and, and this shows just the high relevance of, you know, of the topic uh, that you that you have pointed on. And I really encourage you to uh, yeah to interact with each other probably you can uh, you can you can publish like a joint uh, paper or you know to to start somehow a, a dialogue and and exchange um, um, to exchange all all those ideas because it's uh, it, it I think it's it's it would be very very fruitful to continue the um, this discussion. Unfortunately, today we have not um, we have no more time to continue this discussion. But uh, uh, I'm really amazed how it how lively uh, it was. So, Carl, thank you, thank you very much. All right, good talking to y'all. Enjoyed the discussion a lot. See y'all later. Bye.